when I got called to follow Jesus, I was coming back from a failed attempted armed robbery. When I got called to follow Jesus, that that is that is where my calling came from. That that is where I heard God's voice for the first time. That is where things shifted in my life. I was I was I was with somebody who who I called friend at the time and we were struggling financially and we wanted to do things differently. And we went and we decided that we were going to rob a store. The plan was for the individual to come out with the money bag at closing um, and we were going to rob this individual. By that by by that, I mean, by any means necessary. We're going to get whatever was in the money bag and we were going to leave. And so on our journey, on our way there, um, you know, we had to climb through some mud. We had to go through a ditch and we got there and we crouched down and we hid behind this this building and waited for the individual to come out. The friend who I was with, he had scouted the place a few times. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knew what time she came out. He already knew everything was planned and it was everything seemed to be perfect. And we had calculated in our mind. I remember this. We had calculated in our mind that we were probably going to walk away with about twenty five hundred dollars a piece. I was literally ready to throw my entire life away for twenty five hundred dollars. Everybody's not called the same. Every relationship and every situation that God has, he calls you and he meets you where you are. So we're sitting there, we're crouched down, we're waiting. And as we're waiting, uh, another vehicle pulls up all the way on the other side of the parking lot. And at that time, we looked at each other and I'm like, how in the world can we get over there and get back over here in enough time? Wasn't possible. So the initial response is, you know what, we're going to wait for the lady to come out and make sure everything goes smooth and then we'll come back tomorrow. And so the car was on the other side and and we looked and the lady came out. She got in the car and she drove around and she went over to the bank to make the deposit. And I'm we're looking at the other car and there's two guys just sitting in the car. It's a vehicle. It's a box. Chevy. I remember like it was yesterday. They're just sitting in the car. Nobody's looking. Nobody's talking. They're just sitting in the car. I thought maybe they might have been rolling a blunt or something, but they wasn't. They were just sitting in the car. It was just the strangest thing in the world. And they just sat there for probably another five or six minutes. And then they pulled off out of the parking lot. I looked at him. He looked at me like that was just strange. We leave on the way back. The ditch that we had came through in order to get there, the water had risen up. There was no way we could have made it out of there in enough time without being caught. We finally got to the car where we had parked and we got in the car. We're driving back and he's explaining to me what happened. He he said, man, my bad. I don't know how that slipped. I don't know. I ain't never seen that car before. And in the vehicle, while he's talking to me, I hear audibly as loud as if he was the one said it. That was the last time. I stopped. I looked at him and I said, what did you say? And he just kept talking about how we was going to come back tomorrow and what, what the mistakes we made. And I said, no, no, no. What did you just say? And he repeated what he said. And I said, no, no, no. And I immediately know it was God. I'm in the car. I'm in the vehicle. I'm shaking. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what's going on. We, we get to the house. He drops me off. I get out. I'm all wet and muddy. I walk in and I go into... Uh, where my daughter was asleep. She was maybe one or two. And I I dropped to my knees and I repented. And I, I said, God, I don't understand you. I, I heard about you uh, from other people. And I, I was brought up in church. I wasn't really, I wasn't really with it, but I'm with it now. So you do your thing. I, I, you do your thing. I'm with you. That, I mean, that, that literally was my prayer. It was, it was just honest and open. And so in that journey, from that moment, the journey of discipleship began for me. Why am I telling you this? Why am I saying this to you? Because a lot of times we can look at other people's journey and draw comparisons. For so long, I shunned my calling to teach the gospel. For so long, I shunned all of, all of the gifts that God gave me. I, I pushed them aside because I never felt worthy enough. I watch all these guys who preach the gospel. I watch all these guys who teach. I watch all these guys who boldly talk about Jesus. And I'm like, man, God, I can't because they don't have a past I got. God, I can't because they don't have the history I got. In my journey from discipleship, I started way behind the starting line. And it was a long journey for me. There was a lot of things that had to be worked out of my system. And because of all of those things, I, was, I always felt unworthy. I always felt like 
I always felt like this was this wasn't going to work for me. This wasn't the path for me. Maybe I should just be quiet. Maybe I should just be in the back. I always felt like that. And so God is saying, I I care about your heart. I care about your motive. I don't care about what you did. I care about why you did it and I can use that. I can use that. And so I felt so unworthy because I was willing to risk my life, to risk my entire future for probably a couple of grand. And and God did not care what I did, but he saw why I did it. And he said, I could use that. He saw that I was so bold. I was willing to risk freedom for something of little value. And he said, what if I gave him real value? What if I showed him what real value looked like? I could use that. What if I showed him if something of true value, because he was willing to risk it all for something of no value, what if I exposed him to something that was worth everything? I could use that. 